So as you guys know, on this channel, we really like looking inside of things. I've looked inside myself, I've looked inside Green, Exumavoid, Iskal, we've looked inside the Creeper, the Villager, the Enderman, and a whole bunch of other different things. But so far, I have never looked inside a block. Well today, we're going to be changing that. And what better block to start off with than TNT? Now as you can see, there's all sorts of things going on, and I think the first place that we should start is how the TNT actually explodes. What actually causes it to explode? And for those of you who have built a creeper farm before, you might recognize this mechanism because these things are actually creeper spawners. These are creeper spawners on the corners here. We've also got another two out the back. And as soon as you place in the block of TNT, those creepers are going to start spawning. And that's what's actually going to cause the explosion of the TNT. So it's not the gunpowder in the sand that you put inside the crafting grid. What that will do is that will create the shell. And then as soon as you place in the TNT, it's going to fill up with creepers. And that's going to provide the actual explosion fuel that is going to cause this block to be destructive. Now, of course, these spawning platforms do actually work. They work considerably faster on the inside of the actual TNT block. But just for demonstration, I'm going to show you them functioning on the big TNT block. So if we just set ourselves into hard mode and then take a bit of a fly around. We're going to have to do a little bit of loading here, but we should begin to see some creepers spawning on the insides of these areas. And let's take a look. We don't have any there, but we do have one creeper. One creeper is spawned inside the spawning platform. And as I say, in the actual TNT block, it will be considerably faster and there'll be lots more of them. But that's not all we've got going on inside here. Obviously, we need some way to ignite the creepers that have spawned. And the way that we do that is using the ignition core. Now I'm going to warn you, I am going to have to head inside the TNT contraption. And as you know, this place is incredibly loud, but this is the activation circuit. So we've got all of these sticky pistons running in here with redstone blocks on their faces. And then they kind of split off out like this and go towards here and also down towards the bottom as well. You can see those sticky pistons and the redstone blocks on their faces. Those are all part of this circuit. And if we were to ignite this TNT by flicking this lever up at the top, you can see that everything extends and the redstone blocks get moved across, activating the redstone lamps on the top and bottom of the spawning modules. And what that essentially does is tells these creepers that have spawned inside this area here, hey, it's your time to go. You have now got to ignite and blow up this wonderful TNT block here. Now I know what you're thinking, that's all well and good, but what on earth is making that horrendous racket that has been going throughout this entire video? Uh, that would be the sand creator. So as I mentioned earlier on, the sand and the gunpowder that you put inside the crafting grid isn't actually enough to make a fully functional TNT block. It just creates the framework, you place in the TNT, and then the TNT block actually creates the rest. So what this is doing is it's rubbing two bits of stone up against each other very quickly, and little bits of stone rub off, and that is the sand that actually collects up down at the bottom and is then used for the explosion. Now, I'm going to be totally honest. I'm not a chemist, I'm not an explosionologist, and I'm not an anarchist or anything like that. I have no clue what part the sand plays in the TNT explosion. I just know that it's important, and clearly we need lots of it. Now, while we're up at the top here, there's something that I want to point out that I think is really interesting. Something that I really wasn't expecting to see on the inside of the TNT block. So for those of you who have played Minecraft for a very long time, you may remember that you used to be able to ignite TNT with your fist. So you'd place down a piece of TNT and then there'd be no way to remove it from the world. You'd have to just punch it and it would explode. Now, thankfully, that was removed because that was a massive pain in the backside. But clearly, the feature still exists on the inside of the TNT block. So what these are, are these are armor stands which would have detected that punch. To detect the punch, it would kind of knock them around a little bit, they'd move forward in the water stream, and then they'd go through this tripwire here, and then that would send a signal out towards the activator core or the ignition core, which would then cause the TNT to explode. But as you can see, they have now been blocked off. So these things can no longer move, and obviously we've got lots of signs and things and some cobwebs as to the fact that this has not been used for a long time. But it's just quite cool that that's still in there. It's a bit like how humans have a tailbone, even though we don't have a tail anymore. Anyway, moving on from that one, we're now going to head down to the bottom of the TNT block to one of the most important circuits, in my opinion, which is the water detection system. Now, for anyone who's built a redstone contraption that uses TNT, you will know that this is an incredibly important circuit because if you ignite TNT inside water, it doesn't blow anything up. It blows up, but it doesn't destroy any blocks, which is amazing because, of course, that means that you can reuse the redstone contraption involving TNT. Now, the way that the TNT actually detects the water is we have got a few little holes on the side of the block right at the very bottom, and then we have these little armor stands right here. So if some water was to flow in, 
these armor stands would be pushed around and then they'd end up on top of the pressure plates and you can see that extends out all of these pistons which then activates these redstone lines right here which then activate the dispensers and it dispenses out water to stop our creepers from actually blowing up the surrounding area so these things they're going to explode it's all going to look very dramatic but they're not actually going to destroy any blocks and then once the water goes away all of those water will be retracted from the dispensers and then it will continue to destroy things. It's quite a cool little circuit. It's really smart. So there we have it guys. Those are the innards and gizzards of the TNT block. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know down in the comments section if you want to see more of these what's inside videos. But anyway, if you did enjoy this video, please drop that like button. If you really loved it, then make sure to subscribe. But thanks for watching guys. This has been Mumbo and I'm out. I'll see you later.